Before we jump in, let me ask you something. What if I told you the refrigerator might be the safest place for your Venus flytrap this winter? Yep, right next to the leftovers. Welcome back to Carnivorous Plants Hub. Today we're diving into one of the most controversial dormancy methods out there, refrigerator dormancy. Some growers swear by it, others think it's plant cruelty, but the truth is somewhere in the middle. And by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly whether this method is right for you, or if you should avoid it entirely. And hey, don't click away, because in the second half of this video, I'm going to take this gorgeous A2 fang cross and this typical Venus flytrap here and actually put them into the refrigerator dormancy step by step so you can see exactly how I prep it, clean it, and bag it, and tuck it away for its chilly winter nap. I'll also be giving monthly update videos so you can follow along and see how it's doing all winter long. So pour some water on that like button and subscribe, and let's get into the cold, weird world of refrigerator dormancy. Before we get into refrigerator dormancy, let's zoom out for just a little bit and talk about what dormancy actually is, and what Venus flytraps really want during this time. Venus flytraps aren't tropical plants, they're temperate, which means the long-term health depends on a yearly rest mode, where the days get shorter, temperatures drop, and the plant basically hits the brakes on growth. This slowdown usually takes around 12 weeks, the changes above ground are typically subtle, but under the soil, the rhizome is quietly storing its energy so it can explode with new traps when the spring hits. And here's the part that a lot of people forget. These plants only grow naturally in one tiny spot on the planet, about a 75 mile radius around Wilmington, North Carolina. That's it, nowhere else. So when we try to mimic dormancy at home, our goal is to recreate the conditions that they experience there. Take a look at this temperature data. December, January, and February are when flight traps settle into full dormancy. Daytime highs in Wilmington sit in the mid 40s to low 60s. The nighttime lows drift into the upper 30s, cool, stable, and consistent. That's the sweet spot that we're aiming for when we help our plants through winter. Ideally, you want your flytrap's winter temperatures to match those Wilmington numbers as closely as possible. That's where dormancy really shines. But let's be real, most of us don't live anywhere near North Carolina. And depending on where you are, recreating those conditions can be anywhere from inconvenient to downright impossible. Now, this video is all about refrigerator dormancy, but before we toss your flytrap next to the leftover pizza, I want you to consider every other option first. The fridge can work, but in my opinion, it should be a last resort, not your go-to method. If you can keep your flytrap outside and let it naturally track those cooler temperatures, that is almost always the best choice. Remember, these plants are tougher than they look. Those Wilmington averages we talked about, they're just that. Averages. Venus flytraps can absolutely handle occasional dips into freezing temps. A night or two below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, no big deal. Even a solid freeze here and there is totally fine. Where things get risky is when you're dealing with constant, unrelenting freezing. Days or even weeks where the temperatures never pop back above 32 degrees Fahrenheit. They can survive it, but your chances of losing the plant go way up. And that's when the refrigerator starts creeping in as a reasonable option. So before we jump into fridge dormancy, let's talk about a couple of alternatives that I would personally choose, especially if I live somewhere that gets cold in the winter. If you have an unheated room in your house that hovers around the 50 degree Fahrenheit, that's an incredible setup. It's cool, it's stable, and honestly, it's way closer to the conditions these plants see in the Carolinas than the refrigerator ever will be. Another great option is an unheated garage or shed that stays above freezing most of the winter. As long as it doesn't turn into ice chests for weeks at a time, this can give your flight traps a really natural, stress-free dormancy. The last option that I think is probably 50-50 with the fridge is overwintering your Venus fly traps. You can pot your plants into bigger planters that have more substrate for insulation. You can also bury the plant in bark, pine needles, dead leaves to give it further insulation. You can stash it in a place that's as shielded from the elements as possible. This used to be my personal method, but I lost several fly traps to rot when I overwintered. I think if I had to choose now, I'd probably choose the fridge over the overwintering methods. Now, when do I actually recommend considering refrigerator dormancy? It's actually pretty simple. There's three situations that I think warrant a refrigerator. Let's start with the first one here. If you live somewhere that doesn't get cold, if your winter temps are hanging out in the 50s or warmer, your flight trap just isn't getting the cues it needs for proper dormancy. It's probably getting shorter photo periods, but according to some experienced growers, that just isn't enough. In that case, the refrigerator starts to become a legitimate option, not because it's ideal, but because it gives the plant access to the cold period it must have to stay healthy long term. So if your winter feels more like a mild spring, that's when the fridge starts to make a little bit more sense. For full transparency, I want to share something interesting that I've learned from growers in really warm climates, especially places like Florida and Hawaii. In Florida, I've talked to some growers who put their fly traps through what I'd call a soft dormancy. 
Remember, dormancy is triggered by two things, reduced temperatures and reduced light. Some people believe that you can get away with lowering the light, but keeping the temperatures relatively high, and the plant will sort of go dormant. Whether this is healthy long-term is honestly very debated. There isn't much scientific research done on it, so most of what we know is based on personal experience and anecdotal stories from growers. But here's where it gets really telling. I've had conversations with growers in Hawaii, and almost every single one of them told me the same thing. They could never keep a Venus flytrap alive long term without using the refrigerator dormancy. Soft dormancy just didn't cut it. Their plants slowly declined year after year until they started giving them a proper cold period in the fridge. So I'm sharing this because I want you to understand where my recommendations come from. I'm relying heavily on the experiences of people growing flytraps in climates that are extremely challenging for these plants. If you're in Hawaii or any place where the winter never really drops into those cold temperatures, the refrigerator might genuinely be your best and sometimes only option for giving your flytrap a true dormancy. The second situation that I want to talk about is if you live in an area that gets too cold. If you're in parts of Canada, for example, where daytime temperatures can sit in the 20s Fahrenheit, keeping your flytraps outside is pretty much a death sentence. These plants can handle freezing, but not relentless, all-day, everyday freezing. In those climates, giving them controlled cold period inside a refrigerator is often the safest way to get them through a winter alive. And the last scenario where I'd consider fridge dormancy is if you simply don't have access to the outdoors. Maybe you're in an apartment, maybe you're growing everything indoors under grow lights. There's no balcony, no patio, no cold space at all. If you want to give your fly traps a proper dormancy and you can't offer natural outdoor temperatures, the refrigerator may be your only real option. So whether your climate is too warm or way too cold, or you just don't have access to a place where nature can do its thing, refrigerator dormancy can fill that gap and give your plant the winter rest it absolutely needs. Okay, and real quick before I show you how to execute refrigerator dormancy, I wanna thank you so much for being here. Make sure to pour some water on the like button if you're finding this video useful and subscribe to help my channel grow. Also, make sure to head over to my website, cardiversplantshub.com. When your plants come out of dormancy, you're gonna need some substrate and a new planter. I make my own premium substrate specifically for Venus flytraps and other carnivorous plants. I spend hours sifting and rinsing the substrate so when it arrives to you, it's 100% ready to go. I sell it by itself, but I also sell it in repotting kits with planters. It takes all the guesswork out of your next repotting. Each kit will come with enough substrate to fill all the included planters with some substrate always left over. Don't take my word for it. Head on over and read hundreds of reviews from happy customers. There's links in the description and the pinned comment. Also, if you're in the market for a Venus flytrap or other carnivorous plants, I'm so excited to be teaming up with California carnivores. They are one of the most experienced and knowledgeable carnivorous plant nurseries in the entire world. They have a massive selection year-round of all types of carnivorous plants. There will definitely be something in their nursery that you fall in love with. On top of that, they have been generous enough to offer my viewers an exclusive 10% discount on their order when they enter Bug Eater at checkout. That's B-U-G-E-A-T-E-R, Bug Eater. I have links in the description and the pinned comment so you can head on over and pick out the perfect carnivorous plant to add to your collection. You know you deserve it. Let's go ahead and head on back to the video. All right, now that we've covered when you should use refrigerator dormancy, let's talk about the part that everyone's really here for, how to actually do it. This method is specifically for putting your Venus flytrap in the fridge bare root. Yes, some people do keep the plant in its pot and stick the whole thing straight into the refrigerator. I've tried that once, and let's just say the mold and mildew situation was a nightmare. I never want to relive that again. So now, I go bare root. I like to use a cup or a bowl of distilled or filtered water and just dip the roots in it. This helps wash away peat-based mixes pretty easily. If you're working with long fiber sphagnum, you don't have to obsess over getting every strand off since we're going to be wrapping the roots in moss again anyway. But no matter what medium you're removing, take your time here. These roots are delicate. And here's an important rule. If removing substrate means you'd have to break a root, just leave that bit of substrate attached. A tiny piece of peat stuck to a root is way better than damaged root going into dormancy. The other thing that you're going to want to do is remove anything that is dead. This includes any brown or black growth. You also want to check for any parts of the rhizome that are brown and squishy. Simply cut off all parts of the rhizome that are not white and firm and healthy. All dead growth can attract mold and mildew. It's much easier to get rid of all of this when the trap is bare root and out of the substrate. Take advantage of your opportunity and clean the fly trap up. Now, it's time to give these roots their winter blanket. We're going to wrap the roots in long fiber sphagnum moss. You can pick this up at Amazon or even Lowe's or Home Depot will typically have it in their plant section. 
Soak the moss in the same water that you would use to water your fly trap. I use distilled or water filtered with my zero water filter. Once your moss is ready and your roots are as clean as you can safely get them, grab a small handful, but before you start wrapping it, this part's important. Wring the moss out really well. We want it to be damp, but not dripping. If it's too wet, you do increase the chances of rot, especially during fridge dormancy. A moist, but not soggy environment is perfect. Go ahead and wrap the rhizome and the roots snugly in the moss. Not super tight, but just enough to keep them protected and evenly hydrated. And the next thing we do here is we're gonna place the wrapped plant into the corner of a Ziploc bag. This keeps the moisture in, prevents the moss from drying out, and gives the plant a controlled environment through the dormant period. Seal the bag and label it if you wanna keep track. I like to write down when I put it in, and then I also mark down the date each time that I check it. If you need a free plant tracker and Venus Flytrap care sheet, head on over to my website to get those for free. The tracker can really help you keep track of your care. The plant is now ready to go into the refrigerator for its long winter nap. All right, let's talk timing. When to start the refrigerator dormancy and how long your fly trap should stay in there. If you live in a tropical climate where winter temperatures never really cool down, I recommend giving your plant eight to 10 weeks in the fridge. That's usually enough time for a solid rest. When that time is up, just take it out, pot it back up and return it to its normal growing conditions. If you live somewhere very cold, the timing works a bit differently. As soon as you start seeing regular overnight lows dipping around or below freezing, typically late October to mid-November, that's your cue to start the fridge process. From there, keep your flight trap in the refrigerator until the nighttime temperatures outdoors are consistently back above freezing. Depending on where you live, that could be March, April, or if you're unlucky like me, even May. If you have good grow lights and you're comfortable growing Venus fly traps indoors, you can pull them out a little early, like usually around early March, and get a head start on the growing season. I do this every year. I'll let them wake up under grow lights until conditions outside are safe again. If you're in an apartment or somewhere without outdoor access at all, follow the same rules that you would use for the tropical climates typically about eight to 10 weeks in the fridge, then bring them back out and get them under their grow lights. Another really important thing to consider is I strongly recommend checking your fly trap once a month while it's in the fridge. Mold and mildew are the biggest enemies of refrigerator dormancy. If you spot any, you can hit it with some sulfur-based fungicide. I'll put my recommendations in the description. Wiping out mold early can prevent rot and save your plant. And hey, if you're a seasoned refrigerator dormancy grower, drop your tips and tricks in the comments below. Your experience might help someone save their plant this winter. If you have any questions, drop those in the comments below as well. I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. And if you want to learn more about Venus Flytrap Dormancy, there's a video popping up on the screen right now with some great additional information. Thanks so much for hanging out today. I really hope to catch you in my next video. Bye.